Welcome everyone, I'm King of Valence, and thanks for watching this Spore Speedrun Challenge. Today, we're going to attempt to beat Sol Stage without moving the mouse or using keyboard directions. We're going to place the mouse right on the blue starting arrow, and after we quick play, we won't move the mouse at all for the rest of Cell Stage. In the tide pool, our cell will begin its very long journey to the right, as the cell will continuously swim towards the mouse cursor. Now we will see if it's possible for our cell to randomly stumble into enough food to pass Cell Stage, always heading the same direction. And we managed to get a bit of food already. To make as few inputs as possible, we can let the intro and respawn cutscenes play through on their own, but there is one cutscene that must be skipped manually. This cutscene showing us a new part to collect will play forever, but we can press escape on the keyboard to pass the cutscene. But that's the only required input we have to make after starting cell stage, and we can continue to watch our cells swim onward. But this will take too long, if it even works at all. To help us out, we're going to use Cheat Engine to increase the game to 10 times speed. Starting over from the main menu, Spore is now running at 10 times its normal rate, and we'll put the mouse in the same position as before, right on the start arrow, and begin. And there's the cutscene speeding by, crashing into the tide pool at ludicrous speed. We have the timer in the corner in real time, so if we finally finish cell stage, we'll be able to calculate the actual in-game time spent in the tide pool. There's the cutscene with our new spike piece, which was skipped manually, and we're back off to the races once again. Our cell is progressing through cell stage fairly well. On easy difficulty, there appears to be enough easy access to food that even without steering our cell, we can still progress through cell stage. We occasionally get stuck on large plants or plankton, but thankfully the cell will eventually get unstuck and keep going. Our cell was able to consistently find food and reach the final section of cell stage in about six and a half real minutes. The last section took by far the longest, since we still only have one flagellum, to the game we are still swimming really slowly and the juniors can catch up and bite us. We are completely at the mercy of the other cells and running into plant pieces directly in our path. And in less than nine sped up minutes, we ate enough food to beat cell stage without even playing. In the history, we ate 122 plants, died 63 times, and according to Spore, taking over 15 billion years. Longer than the universe has even existed. Our final time on the clock was 8 minutes and 57.7 seconds, and when factoring in our 10 times speed, took 1 hour, 29 minutes and 37 seconds for Cell Stage to play itself. While this is interesting, Cell Stage is known for its randomness, so before moving on to higher difficulties, we should see if beating Cell Stage like this was a complete fluke, or see if this run was perhaps fast, or maybe even slow. So I didn't do just one trial, I did nine trials, one for each default herbivore cell, not only to get a more representative time, but also to see if the different cell body shapes can impact the run. Not only did all the trials finish Cell Stage, but the results are actually a lot closer together than I would have guessed. Here are the cells lined up from fastest to slowest with their in-game times after calculating the 10 times speed increase. Most of them range from about 1 hour and 23 3 minutes to 1 hour and 36 minutes, only a 13 minute difference between most of the trials. There were two outliers, including the yellow gall cell, which crushed the competition in 57 minutes and 10 seconds, less than an hour, whereas the Urga cell fell way behind, taking over 1 hour and 56 minutes. These could have been particularly lucky or unlucky runs between the cells, but creating such outliers suggests that it was more likely something specific giving each of these cells a large advantage or disadvantage. For example, the gall cell has by far the largest mouth of the default cells. Gall's mouth is only one size below the maximum. Maximum, whereas most of the other cells are the default mouth size, taking six increases to reach the maximum size. After some experimenting, the size does appear to affect the cell's reach for food. Here the smallest mouth size didn't even capture a piece that hit the front of the body, when the largest mouth size can grab further in front of the cell and at a wider range. This gives a huge evolutionary advantage to when we can only travel in one direction, essentially having the largest net to catch the most food can really help. The same is true for the Urgus cell who also has a large net, but instead of capturing food, this cell captured every piece of plankton and debris in the tide pool it came across with its eye stalks. Watching through this run, there were several instances where this cell collects a plankton between its eyes and that blocks a perfectly lined up plant piece from being eaten. The other cells with eye stalks didn't seem to have this problem as they were wide enough to fit the plankton around the mouth, so clearly the cell parts on the body can impact our results. As we move on to carnivores and higher difficulties, we can get a fairer representation of the time it takes to complete this challenge by eliminating the variables of different cell shapes and mouth sizes. We are going to use a standard control cell for the following trials. We found previously that we can create a custom starting cell to start cell stage using Cheat Engine. This way we can start from the very beginning of cell stage with whatever cell we want instead of only being able to use the pre-made cells or needing to use the editor once we get in the tide pool. We are now going to use this cell for the remainder of our tests. We will keep one flagellum just like the other default cells, and we are going to leave the default mouth size as well to keep it even, but with no eye stocks. And here's both the herbivore and carnivore runs on all difficulties. Our herbivore control on easy also got an hour and 23 minutes, right in the average range, showing this cell is suited for setting fair and representative times. The herbivores beat the carnivores on easy and normal difficulties. The herbivore and normal taking a bit longer to complete than on easy, finished in 2 hours and 16 minutes, whereas the carnivores struggled on lower difficulties, taking just over 2 hours on easy, and over 3.5 hours on normal. 
However, on hard difficulty, the carnivore barely takes the win at 4 hours and 25 minutes to the herbivore's 4 hours and 42 minutes. Big thanks to Cheat Engine for being able to speed up Spore, this made running all these trials so much easier. And of course, no cell stage challenge would be complete without an appearance from the pitiful worms. The pitiful worms each have the smallest of their respective mouths with no other parts and will also be ran on hard difficulty. It's time to see if it's possible for the worst cells in the galaxy to complete cell stage without changing direction. In the intro cutscene flies by and our pitiful herbivore gets extremely lucky, immediately finding food. This time, Cheat Engine's speed hack was set to as fast as Spore can go. On hard difficulty, the tutorial cutscene that gives us the spike for free doesn't play, so thankfully we can leave this experiment going without needing to watch it, since this may take a while. I checked up on the run every 20 minutes or so, and to my surprise, the cells were actually making great progress. The herbivore made steady progress throughout cell stage, whereas the carnivore is finding food, but at a slower rate throughout the stage. The carnivore blasted through the fourth section of cell stage in 10 sped up minutes, but struggled in the first part of the last section, taking over 40 sped up minutes. This is generally what we found when we played as the pitiful worms as well. The herbivore was steadier to find food, where some sections were harder than others for the carnivore. But both pitiful worms managed to make it all the way through cell stage on hard difficulty without needing to make any other inputs from the player. In history, the herbivore was the clear victor, only taking 250.2 billion years to advance onto land. Somehow managing to get a kill, probably something to do with Spore being sped up so fast and getting confused, but collecting all six cell parts, eating 144 pieces, and dying 2,069 times. The carnivore coming in at a modest 369.4 billion years, dying 2,977 times. For these runs, Cheat Engine was set to run at 100 times speed, but due to limitations either from the game itself or my computer, we can tell that Spore definitely wasn't running at 100 times speed, so the exact speed up factor is unknown. While Spore doesn't have a traditional in-game level timer, the evolution clocks years do consistently reflect the passage of time in cell stage. We can relate our recorded time to the in-game years on the evolution clock on the history page to calculate the approximate in-game time passed. Experimenting with the evolution clock, it appears that 1 billion years in-game takes about 5.5 minutes of gameplay. The clock increases steadily in the background, but only updates when an action is taken by the cell. For example, eating or dying will bring the clock up to date. The clock begins once our cell starts swimming in the tide pool after the intro cutscene and tutorial cards are passed. We can see after taking 10 minutes with the tutorial cards on screen, the evolution clock has not increased. So this point appears to be when the evolution clock starts counting from, and the evolution clock counts all following cutscenes for time as well. To get the most accurate estimate of in-game years to time, we can run cell stage at regular time without any speedups. After about 30 minutes or so, we'll eat something to update the clock and check on our history. And we've been in cell stage for 5.4 billion years. Divide 30 minutes, 4 seconds by 5.4, and we get around 5 minutes and 34 seconds per billion years. And we can compare this to the earlier cheat engine runs to further validate that we were actually in fact running at 10 times speed to ensure our calculations have been correct up to this point. We did 5 additional runs at various lengths starting from the tutorial cards as well. When we plot these points, we get this graph, which has a very linear relationship between the number of years to time passing. Finding the trend line and corresponding equation, we find that for every billion years passed in cell stage is once again approximately 334 seconds or 5 minutes and 34 seconds. Knowing this relationship will allow us to calculate how long our pitiful worm runs took knowing their evolutionary clocks. Placing in the 250.2 and 369.4 billion years into our equation finds the herbivore took approximately 23 hours and 13 minutes and the carnivore took around 34 hours and 16 minutes. And finally, instead of the worst cell in the galaxy, let's see how fast we can complete this challenge if we make an overpowered starting cell. Let's make an omnivore cell with 5 flagella for maximum speed to start cell stage. Back to 10 times speed, and that's more like it. This overpowered omnivore smoked the competition and beat cell stage in less than 15 minutes. After 3 trials, each run ranged from about 13 to 14 and a half minutes, this time beating Sol Stage without moving the mouse in only 2.2 billion years. And that's everything I wanted to show about beating Sol Stage without moving the mouse or any other directional inputs. All the footage for this video totaled about 8 hours worth, so let me know what you thought of this experiment style video, and let me know what else you'd like me to experiment with Spore in the future. I love getting a chance to use Excel and putting all those math classes to good use. Thank you so much for watching, I'm King of Valence, and I'll see you next time.